Hi friends, welcome back to Max Electronics. In today's video, we will be looking at the Datascope Spectrum OR uh, patient unit. So those are used in the hospitals and uh, for the vets as well. This will monitor your heart rhythm. It also has accessories that you can do blood pressure, you can do um, ECG, you can do all sorts of different things, temperature, pulse, uh, nurse call, you name it. So this unit apparently has a problem it uh, changed the language to Dutch, I think, or something like that. And uh, we can't get into the service menu to change it. So let's get to the bench and have a look at it. So here is the unit itself. I've plugged it into AC power. So if I turn it on, there is a switch button on the side here. Oh, let me get rid of this. Uh, there's a defibrillator. Uh, IABP, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, there's a two slots for the cards, which we don't have. So um, there's PCMCIA cards. Power button. So if I turn it on, very loud beep. You can hear the fan turn on, the lights come on. And the unit boots fine. As you can see, flat lines because we've got nothing connected. Uh, so it works absolutely fine. However, you've noticed it says monitor set up in English, print set up in English, parameters in English, and then it's got uh, functis and patient spelled a bit incorrectly. Um, if we go into menu, so let's say I think trends, and it is in a different language. So even though it says leads off, you know, it, it's event, scrolling so it's mixed language setup however is in english if we go into setup menu it's it's actually says dutch but it doesn't mean dutch i think it's just it's a plain format auto manual so it's yeah and to get into the uh as you see it says dutch everywhere it, it's actually what i understand it's the name of the settings it's not doesn't mean dutch language so let me zoom in so you can see uh all those it, it's a bit strange parameters if we exit that and go to um where is the exit if we go to setup which is i don't remember that's ECG, I think. Again, it's all in different languages. Excuse the fly. And to change the language, you need to get into service menu. Now the service manual says that to get into service menu, we turn the machine off. We hold down the trends button and hold it uh, and turn the unit on holding those buttons until you see the logo and then we'll let go of the buttons and it should go into the uh, setup menu which is you know to set up the unit the country language all that sort of stuff uh, time format but this unit doesn't go into it so if i hold trends and turn it on now logo appeared i'll let go of the buttons and now it should go into the service menu but what we get is the beeping and that's it so nothing i'll have to turn it off because it's loud and there's nothing no response from any buttons so you can just turn it off the other one where you can go into diagnostics which is you know your typical button diagnostics that works i'm pretty sure it's a spectrometry and turn it on and that's it, it it's gone into diagnostic test and again it's a different language so we can go into calibration menu and um, that's what lets you calibrate uh, the unit. We're gonna open it up and see if we can uh, do something about it. I can't guarantee that we're gonna fix it. I've had a look online and it apparently could be a bad main board. Uh, we'll check it out inside. It could be simply bad capacitors, you know, I'm not sure what some people say it's a corrupt um, firmware, but um, we're gonna have a look inside the unit anyway. If you're curious to see what's inside, stay tuned. So I'm going to start by removing uh, obviously the uh, tape which was cropped um, to the size. It's not even, you can see someone just hacked it to fit the unit. Now we're going to remove the lead acid batteries that are probably dead by now. 
They are a little bit tricky to open, but there we go. And there are two large lead acid batteries, which I believe would be dead. But it's worth, you know, maybe seeing if they're still all right, checking the voltages, maybe we can revive them. Now, I'm hoping that there may be a CMOS battery inside that is dead. And that's what's causing the problems. I remember I've dealt with um, syringe pumps. It's the pumps where you put a syringe and it slowly, you know, pushes the liquid or drug, whatever it is, into the patient. And they had all uh, the same problem. They were faulty, they wouldn't work. And the reason was for that is little um, nickel cadmium battery inside that died. And without that battery, they would still turn on and they would just not work correctly and or not work at all. So we're gonna remove that back plate and to hope, I hope that that could be the case here. If it's not, we'll check the main board, maybe some capacitors and see what we can do. If uh, I'm still unable to get into the menu, then, you know, the unit still works just in a different language and you gotta get used to it working without the English. So I'm gonna remove all the screws and remove all the sides and accessories that we can before we take the lid off. I've removed everything I could from the unit as a module. So we've got a COM port module that, is, uh, that plugs into here. And you have to remove it to undo the cover because the screw's just here. We've got the patient module, which is just connects uh, the, um, you know, all the leads and test leads and all that sort of stuff. We've got uh, another power supply module, which I have removed as well. We're gonna have a look at that, make sure all the caps are good. Because, you know, it looks like it's a multi-voltage, so, you know, having like a drop of, say, it's a bad cap and you have 3.3 uh, volts that's supposed to be going to all the processes and suddenly it's 2 volts or something like that, that could be causing problems. It'll be still enough to run it, but not enough to run it properly. So that's it for the module. So I've undone all the screws, so we're going to remove this together. I have not removed it yet. Okay. Uh, let's disconnect the monitor. There's a little ribbon cables. Well, there's only one that disconnects the LCD panel. So this is the LCD panel that we can see. So this would be the LVDS driver, actually. No, the LVDS, I think it's a TTL panel, actually. I'm not sure, it looks like a TTL. There's a cap that is sideways for some reason, doesn't matter, but it works. That all it matters. So we've got our inverter for the backlight and the panel itself, little speaker here that is very loud, and that's it, and the control panel in the front. Yep, that's it. So that can go aside since uh, I'm pretty sure there's nothing wrong with that. Now the main unit is still have to be removed from this panel. So we've got that attachment. I'm not sure what that is. It's some sort of external plug-in. We've got our blood pressure pump. And uh, yeah, and the back plate. So let me remove this back plate. After trying um, for a while, it took a while to remove the main board, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, that's the back of it. So we've got a battery compartment for those um, not lithium, but for those lead acid batteries. We've got a little solenoid for the blood pressure pump relief. A little printer, thermal printer, power switch, and a little driver for the printer, I guess. Well, it's not a driver, it's more of a power supply for the printer with a little fan, which will be cleaned because it's filthy dirty, as usual. And that's it for the back of it. So let's have a look at the main board. Here is the main board and it's got a multiple card. So looks, yeah, looks complicated. <laughs> I can't see a battery anywhere that would hold the BIOS or something. So we'll, um, I'll take that off the main back plate and check the back of it. There's a lot of stuff in the back. So I'll make sure all the contacts are intact. And uh, yeah, still can't see any bios or batteries. Let me get this off this uh, back plate and we'll have a look on the other side. I've decided to power the unit up. I've had a look at the board. I can't see anything wrong with it. 
um, there's no corrosion, the contacts look nice and shiny. So I decided to power on without any accessories, so all I've done is connected that uh, panel and the main board with a power supply at the back. So I'll turn the power on now. All right, and now I'm gonna try holding trends again while I am uh, powering the unit. Let me just get to the contacts. Okay, so we'll see if it'll still do the error. Yeah. Okay. And if we just start the unit without going into the menu. Yeah, so there is still different language. Okay, so unfortunately I don't think I'll be able to fix it. I will try reflowing the chips and then I'll put it back together and see if it'll still let me go into the menu. But it doesn't look like it. It looks like the main board is uh, corrupt, the actual firmware is corrupt, which I can't do anything about. I don't have firmware, I don't have any ways to upload it in there, I don't know how to or anything like that, unfortunately. Uh, even the service manual recommends just replacing the whole board. It doesn't say, you know, fix this chip. It doesn't have a schematic or anything. It just says replace the main board. So let me just try reflowing a um, couple of chips and see what happens. So I um, put it back together. I'm pretty sure that uh, nothing has changed. So that is a very loud beep. Um... So it loads, but again, we cannot change the language. Uh, we can probably print. It's printing something. Yeah, that's working. And DCG, I guess. So it prints uh, this sort of thing. And the ECG, which I'll stop. Oh. So here's ECG with nothing, so at least that works, you can still do ECG. It's the language that is a problem, and unfortunately I can't fix it. It's new board. So um, I'll try entering the mode again, but I doubt that um, that can be fixed. So uh, yeah, can't get into that mode. So this is it for this Spectrum uh, data scope, human vital screen monitor thing. <laughs> uh, this is uh, unfortunately didn't turn out well, couldn't find the solution to the problem. So it stays in Dutch or I don't know, um, could be other language. It's weird because it's mixed, it's, it's English and it's uh, some other language. It's still usable, it works. There's no problem with, you know, readings or anything like that. It's still, you can go into the um, menu to calibrate it or do anything like that. Uh, but the problem is the language. So that's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed watching this video. There'll be more videos coming up very soon. Stay tuned. My name is Max. Bye.